Welcome to the Get Fit Guys Quick and Dirty Tips to Get Moving and Shape Up. My name is Brock Armstrong and I am the Get Fit Guy. For us fit folks with lofty goals and plans, parties can be a cause of stress and worry. Well, today's podcast is going to give you a step-by-step guide that will allow you to party without losing any fitness or backsliding on your athletic performance goals. Okay, you know, parties, get-togethers, or even special events are a great chance to catch up with friends and cut loose and have some fun, especially if they arrive during your off-training season. But they also bring with them some unscheduled overindulging, and for many of us fit folks with lofty race goals and big fitness plans, well, parties can also be a cause of fear of losing all that fitness or backsliding on our goals. The problem is that partying, especially if it involves alcohol, can be pretty hard on the body. All right, here, my friends, is a blow-by-blow plan to arm yourself with the tools that you need to ensure that you get through each party without any added guilt, shame, lost gains, or any unwanted pounds. So, let's start two days before the party. Log as much extra sleep and naps as possible. Being well-rested before the party will mean that you can have more fun, you can stay out later without yawning embarrassingly, and limit the oxidative stress of staying out late. Yes, good quality sleep is important all year round, but a good night's sleep will help you make sure that being exhausted, well, it doesn't cause you to have lapses in judgment when it comes to food and alcohol and exercise. Also, make sure that you get all of your workouts done in the days leading up to the party. Or perhaps you can even throw in a couple extras. Exercise increases your own or your endogenous antioxidant production and can also reduce liver damage from the alcohol that, well, you may or may not enjoy. Okay, now, on the morning of the party, once you hit the bathroom and you put the coffee or the tea on, it's time to set some intentions and decide ahead of time what behaviors that you will and won't compromise on later on tonight. You have your fitness and your weight loss and your performance goals, and they are as important tonight as they are any other night. So, make a plan. If your good intentions aren't crystal clear, you'll have trouble sticking to them. Don't walk into the party and base your decisions on whims. Base them on your specific goals and your specific priorities. Write them down while you drink your black coffee or your black tea. With no sugar or milk, because that will break your fast, and we don't want to do that. Not yet. Now, put that note somewhere where you can easily peek at it later in the day. Now, next, if you live in a cold climate, or even if you don't, go outside to exercise. A heated indoor gym is certainly comfy, but you will actually burn more calories by going outside. Of course, you need to be mentally prepared to be cold when you start your bike ride or your run or your brisk shiver walk, but remember that you'll warm up after about 10 minutes or so, so hang in there. But be sure to protect the body parts that are cold sensitive, like your head and your fingers and your feet. Just wear a toque or wool hat or gloves and some warm socks. Then, after about 30 to 45 minutes of cold exposure and exercise, it is now time to break your fast. And although having the perfect breakfast doesn't guarantee that you'll stick to your plan for the rest of the day, it can certainly help. Adding some protein often helps to keep you feeling full, and it can also boost your metabolism a little bit. And it can help you hold on to your muscle even if you're losing weight in general. Avoid sugar and add some antioxidant-rich vegetables and some healthy fats. And you can get more breakfast information in the Nutrition Divas article called Nine Ways to Optimize Your Breakfast, and I'll put a link in the show notes over at getfitguy.quickanddirtytips.com. Just look for episode 368. Now, if you are planning to drink more alcohol than usual tonight, eat a few eggs or some liver, or you can take a few choline supplements. Your liver processes choline quickly when you drink alcohol, and if you metabolize alcohol while you have a little extra choline in your system, you may feel better the next morning. You can check out the article called How to Stay Fit While Partying for more biohacky kind of tips like this one. All right, on your way to work, I want you to try adopting a carless mindset and find a more active way to get to work. 
Can you walk, ride your bike, take the bus, take the subway, or any combo of those? The great thing about not sitting on your butt in a car in traffic is that the alternatives involve physically moving your body. I mean, even taking the bus or the subway involves walking, standing, and balancing, or a thing called proprioception, that we don't use when we're sitting in a car seat. Keeping the blood flowing will not only burn some extra calories and keep your metabolism moving, but it will give you more energy, focus, spring in your step, and a glimmer in your eye. Now, once you're at work, set an alarm on your smartphone or your computer to go off every hour on the hour and do some push-ups or some calf raises or squats or jumping jacks or burpees. You may know this as the greasing the groove technique from the martial arts weight training book called The Naked Warrior. But if you don't, this is how it works. Instead of doing a long workout at the gym, you simply spread your exercises out throughout the day. Now, this not only allows you to become more proficient at certain movements, like push-ups, if that's the movement that you choose for the day, but it also elevates and re-elevates your metabolism throughout the day. Lately, I've been doing this to improve my squat range of motion. I want to get better at squatting, so I have a rule that every time I go to the bathroom during the day, I have to do 20 squats. Examples of other greasing the groove include doing 25 jumping jacks for every hour that you're sitting at your desk, or doing 10 push-ups during every commercial break of a television program, or doing 20 calf raises every time you make a phone call, or doing 30 seconds of isometric hand squeezes every time you get an email from your boss. Aside from all the other benefits that I mentioned, this can make you more productive, and it clears your head, and it gets you refocused and energized. Yes, getting up from your desk is good for your brain as well as your body. Now, before you go and eat lunch, studies have shown that alcohol can mess with your hormone levels and even boost your estrogen levels, which is bad news for both men and women. So, to give yourself a fighting chance before you eat lunch, head out and do any of these testosterone-elevating workouts. You can run 5 to 10 short 15-second sprints, but make sure you do a full recovery after each sprint, which is generally three to four times longer than you sprinted. Or you can do some full body heavy exercises like squats, deadlifts, bench presses, and make sure you're doing it at 85 to 95% of your one rep max, and that means it's heavy. Or you can try something called forced reps, and for this, you're gonna need a partner. Choose a weight that allows you to do five to six reps on your own. Then, it requires you to have an assistance to get another 3 or 4 reps done after that, for a total of 8 to 10 reps. Repeat this anywhere from 2 to 6 sets. Or finally, you can try a full body workout like this one. Do a good warm up, then do 4 sets of 8 repetitions of bench press, paired with 4 sets of 8 repetitions of squats. Then do four sets of eight repetitions of deadlifts paired with four sets of eight repetitions of pull-ups. Then do six sets of maximum 10 second sprints. And then you just end with a good cool down. All right, now it's time to eat your lunch. Stabilize your blood sugar and stay satiated by eating a healthy lunch. Try eating a nice portion of lean protein with some leafy greens to keep yourself full and satisfied until party time. I probably don't have to twist your arm, but you can consider actually eating a few squares of high cacao dark chocolate after your lunch. Some fats, including cacao fat and the avocado that you could add to your salad, actually protect against alcohol-induced liver injury, and the cacao polyphenols also increase your antioxidant capacity. And if you're planning to get really carried away tonight, you could also take 200 to 400 milligrams of magnesium with your lunch because alcohol does deplete magnesium stores. All right, now you're back at work, but before you get busy with your work stuff again, find that little piece of paper where you wrote your intentions down for the day and give it a once over. Take a deep, Cleansing breath, then remind yourself that you are not going to give in to peer pressure at the party. When you're having a good time with your friends and your family and with food and booze, you can easily forget all your good intentions. So use this time to remind yourself that you will not succumb to the mentality that you deserve to go nuts just because it's a party. 
remind yourself that you can have fun without derailing your goals because, well, how fun can it be when you're full of regret in the morning? I once heard it put this way, don't borrow from tomorrow's happiness. And this can apply to food, exercise, and of course, to alcohol. A little bit is fun. A little bit more is a little bit more fun. But more than that, and you start to borrow more and more from tomorrow's happiness. And you owe it to your future self to set good intentions and stick to them. Okay, mid-afternoon, I want you to check in with your hydration. If you haven't had any water since lunch, it's a good time to get hydrated. Don't go crazy, but also remember that you don't want to walk up to the bar already down a quart. Now, even if you've been greasing the groove diligently, go and find a quiet spot and get your heart rate up for a few minutes. What used to be an afternoon coffee break can easily become an afternoon rev break, and you can do any of the following exercises. 50 air deadlifts. The deadlift is a traditional full body weight training exercise, but yeah, you probably don't have a barbell hanging around your office, so you can just pretend that you're holding a barbell. As always, the greater the range of motion, the more calories you will burn. Or you can do 50 mountain climbers. This quick exercise will boost your heart rate while also working your upper body and core. Do them as fast as you can while you maintain good form. Or you can do 25 lunge jumps. These will keep your legs burning and your heart rate elevated for quite a while. Make sure you jump as high as you can, and if you really want to make things tough, you could actually hold a couple reams of paper or a large book in each hand for some added weight. All right, now it's time to head to the party. It can be a good idea to actually eat a healthy snack before you leave for the party, so you don't show up ravenous, which could lead to some immediate and mindless overeating. Also, drink some more water. Getting to the party in a satisfied, and hydrated state with stable blood sugar will help you stay in control of your eating and your drinking. Reviewing your intentions one more time will also help. You know, studies have shown that dining in a large group often causes the average person to eat more than they normally would eat if they were alone or in a smaller group, like their family. Now, keep that in mind and don't let mindless group feeding get the best of you. It's a good idea to avoid those random trays of finger food and appetizers because they can be a real trap. The combination of their deceivingly small serving size coupled with mindlessly munching while chatting can make it hard to keep track of exactly how many of those tiny quiches you actually had. Now, if you think you can handle it, take control and fill a small plate with all the appetizers of your choice. But here's the catch you have to limit yourself to only one plate. And keep in mind how embarrassing it would be to drop a pile of shrimp cocktail on the carpet. So keep that plate reasonable. My mom actually has a good rule. It goes like this. One trip, one plate, no piggies. All right, it's now dinner time, and here's a tip. Be the last person in the lineup for the dinner buffet. You know, buffet food looks yummy before everyone and his dog has touched it and dug around in it, and, well, that can make your eyes bigger than your tummy. But if you're the last chump in the line, not only will you have fewer choices, but you will likely be more judicious with your choosing. Once again, one trip, one plate, no piggies. Now, if the dinner is not buffet style, count yourself lucky. But remember, by finishing everything on your plate, you are not saving anything any of the starving children in faraway countries. Your mother's voice in the back of your head is not saving lives. It is just derailing your well-laid plans. So eat until you're satisfied and leave the rest. You may actually get some accolades for your willpower rather than accusations of being wasteful. Now, after dinner, take a break from the food and stand up to enjoy the party. After all, friends, family, and fun is what parties are all about. So play a game, go dance, go for a walk, or if it's not a dancing kind of party, you can sneak off into a quiet room or the basement or the bathroom in a pinch and continue to grease the groove by doing some air squats, some lunges, jumping jacks, or some other heart rate raising activity. A study that was done on whether movement before or after a meal is more effective on weight loss showed that because blood glucose increases to its maximum at 30 to 60 minutes after a meal, Movement, even if it's something as easy as walking, 
must be started before the glucose levels reach maximum. Once insulin is secreted, well, it will begin to play its dastardly role as the obesity hormone. So start your movement as soon as possible to optimally control your blood sugar levels. Researchers have also found that a post-meal walk, even just for 15 minutes, can help with digestion and improve your blood sugar levels. In one study on postprandial walking, German researchers looked at what happened when people ate a large meal and then consumed either an espresso or an alcoholic digestif or walked at a slow pace on a treadmill. Walking, they found, increased the rate at which food moved through the stomach, but sadly, the beverages had no effect. Not even the espresso. Alright, as the party dies down, stay active and be a helpful guest who lends a hand during the cleanup. Not only will you be the party hero, but it will keep your hands and your mind occupied and away from more of the food or from having just one more for the road. And when you're leaving the party, don't take any leftovers home if you can help it. But if they insist on sending you home with something, be certain to slip it directly into the back of the freezer where you will likely forget about it. Or, at very least, not be tempted to have it as a midnight snack. Now, right before bed, if you're like me, you probably need a shower anyway after a night of partying, so why not double the effect and take a cool shower? A recent study on body temperature and circadian rhythm showed that body temperature helps keep your internal clock in sync, and researchers found that a light-sensitive area of the brain, known as a suprachiasmatic nucleus, acts as a sort of master clock, and when night approaches, it sends out signals to your body to lower your core temperature. Now, taking a cool shower will help your body temperature drop, which prepares the body for all those physiological changes that prepare you for sleep. I am not a fan of that old Tylenol before bed because, well, it's hard on your liver and, well, hasn't your liver been through enough tonight? But I am a fan of a huge glass of water with electrolytes or some trace minerals. Even if you've been sipping occasionally all night, you can't go wrong with one more glass. You could also take what is called an inhibitory neurotransmitter or a sleep aid, such as melatonin. Alcohol can actually reduce your own melatonin secretion, which can contribute to waking up in the middle of the night. Now, the morning after the party, don't think or hesitate. Just get out into the fresh air and do some light exercises, or if you prefer, you can hit a sauna. Just get out there and do anything that gets you sweating, and do it in a fasted state, preferably. Next, have my favorite five-minute shower protocol that involves 20 seconds of cold water and 10 seconds of warm water, back and forth, 10 times through. Finally, eat a breakfast that's high in choline. Remember how alcohol can deplete it. And add in some fats, such as eggs with the yolk, cooked in butter with avocado and turmeric and cayenne, along with a handful of polyphenol-rich blueberries. Curcumin is a potent anti-inflammatory that can limit the severity or the propensity for headaches, and that can be mixed into a smoothie or right into your eggs. The Nutrition Diva has great information on curcumin and how to source it, and I'll put a link to that again in the show notes at getfitguy.quickanddirtytips.com. Look for episode 368. And there you have it. If you follow these steps exactly, or even modify them to fit your reality, you will wake up the morning after a party feeling good and looking great, instead of doing the walk of shame while being filled with regret and a 4 a.m. all-you-can-eat Waffle House meal. Get Fit Guy is written, narrated, and produced by me, Brock Armstrong, with heavy lifting and editorial support from Joe Muscolino. Our sprinting social community manager is Morgan Ratner, our endurance advertising manager is Michelle Margulis, and our head coach at Macmillan Audio is Kathy Doyle. Please consider leaving a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever the heck you listen to podcasts, and remember, you can join me at facebook.com slash getfitguy or twitter.com slash getfitguy or my own website, brockarmstrong.com. Now, what are you waiting for? Get out there and party without setting yourself back. <laughs>